Hi. I guess it's May of 2021, and because it's May, it's myalgic encephalomyelitis month or something like that. It's the month that everybody who has chronic fatigue syndrome or whatever comes out of the woodwork. They come out and they want to sell you all these t-shirts and they want to get you to feel extra sorry for them and they want to make extra excuses. And I'm not real sympathetic to people with certain challenges who make a lot of excuses. It's kind of like somebody that's blind who wants to complain. You got to deal with it. You know, whatever cards you're handed, those are the cards you got to play. And you got to find a way to overcome the challenge. And for so many people, they find associating with like-minded quitters, complainers, whiners, to be the answer to their happiness. In recent weeks... The poster child for MECFS, Whitney, or whatever his name is, has been doing a lot of posting about how he doesn't have a girlfriend and all this good stuff. And and I, I get that. I appreciate his situation. But... You know, I've always felt, and, and I've said this before, and I've been hammered for this before, and I, I think part of Whitney's problem is he has become surrounded by enabling individuals who mean well. Um, I think Whitney has a tremendous amount of mental health issues. I think he probably had them long before he became sick. His dad is that world-famous doctor who I don't necessarily agree with on a lot of things. I think his dad is, to be blunt, withheld a lot of key information. and That right there you know, to me has always been hard for hard to to not see with him. You know, the Open Medicine Foundation I'm not a fan of at all. I'm not a I'm not a fan of this Emmy action and all that stuff you know they they go and they put up shoes out on these courtrooms courtroom steps so everybody has to walk around them and they get all these people sitting around in wheelchairs and they got these posters and you know some people are being pushed around in hospital beds Truth be told, a lot of people who claim to have ME, myalgic encephalomyelitis, they may have something. They may have fibro. They may have whatever. But a lot of them have what the doctors say. They have more of a mental health condition going on than they do a physical one. And they have really caused this condition to become what is the term they've caused this condition to get a stigma associated with it 
you know, the general public doesn't feel sorry for people that are feeling sorry for themselves. They don't respect people who are feeling sorry for themselves. So many of the people with this condition, there are things they can do if they could simply get out of their own way. Today I'm dealing with a lot of brain fog and a lot of issues. You know, like I've said in other videos, my condition's a little unique, a little different. Um, but I do appreciate what the people who have true myalgic encephalomyelitis and toxic encephalopathy are going through. Because so often we are having to wade through these groups of people who, for whatever reason, have just become attached to this condition and claimed it as their own. So when we go and we try to be taken seriously at the medical communities, they, the medical Specialists look at us like them. You know, they, they see so many people with psychological issues claiming this condition as their own. So when somebody actually does show up with this condition, they're not necessarily taken very seriously. I, I don't like awareness campaigns. I don't like protesting. I, I'm, I mean, I realize that has been effective a lot of times over the years, but it's just not for me. It's not something that I'm comfortable participating in or, or witnessing. I, I find it obnoxious, to be honest with you. You know, to me, a logical conversation should get results. And if you're not getting the results you need from a logical conversation, then you're not having a very good conversation and you need to reword your, your presentation to people. But to go out and protest and just be an obnoxious person, you know, telling the world how fatigued you are and telling the world how unfair this condition is to have and how this is the worst condition imaginable and, you know, yourself writing yourself prescriptions for wheelchairs and you're, you know, wearing neck braces and you make us look ridiculous. And the reason why the medical community doesn't take us seriously is because we look absolutely obnoxious when we present ourselves to the public. I don't know what's going on in the house of Whitney. He yelled at me the other day, which is fine. I mean, I'm, I'm fine with that. But there is just, I'm sorry. There's more going on there, it seems, at least to me. than is being led on. I mean, I've, I've honestly always felt there is a serious problem mentally going on with that situation. I've always wondered if he was taken out of that environment, if he wouldn't show some type, if they couldn't figure out a way to show him better improvement. You know, I'm sure his, I, I know his family loves him. Don't get me wrong. 
But his family enables him. His family has become this enabling mechanism. And when you're an individual with dependency tendencies, sometimes those enabling actions can be extremely destructive internally, psychologically. I realize there have been words spoken that he's been tested and tested for genetic challenges. And and I'm not saying there's not something that way going on. But I just, I don't know. I just don't know. And I don't know what the kid's going to do after his parents die. I mean, they're both in their 80s now, I believe. And, you know, what's he going to do? Go live with his sister? Ironically, as his parents have gotten older, he somehow gotten somewhat better you know it's funny how that sort of works when they're not super old you're really dependent but then as they age you start to maybe in the back of your mind realize what am I going to do when they're not here to, to take care of me and is that playing some type of role in his improvement or is his brain just healing somewhat? I do think that he has some type of medical condition. But I do believe, and I've said this time and time again, I, I do believe there is an overwhelming psychological issue that has never really been been looked into and and I'm very sensitive to that allegation because it's been made against me numerous times and I, I don't you know I don't want to sit here and pick on the kid he's not a kid anymore he's in his 30s but What I see with him is what I see with so many others with this condition. They have just become surrounded by enabling individuals. And as a result, it has allowed them to become this invalid in a way. We as individuals have got to learn and develop a fight within us. The person who needs to look out for you is you. You got to find a way to stand up. You got to find a way to overcome the challenge. It's a horrible way I'm putting it, I know. But I see so many people, they get a little. They get a little bump or a little bruise and it takes them out of the game. I know this video isn't making a great deal of sense because it's just, it's one of those days and I'm not making a lot of sense. But maybe in the future, I don't, I don't know, I'm just, I, I when, when you see, when you see the people on these, who are claiming to have this condition, and they just, their focus is 
pain medication. Their focus is pain management. Their focus is this. Their focus is that. Their focus is poor me. Their focus is negativity. Their focus is I can't. Their focus is fatigue. Their focus is everything. But their focus isn't to fight. Their focus isn't to overcome. Their focus is to surround themselves with people who enable them. Surround themselves with people who tell them what they want to hear rather than telling them what they need to hear. You know, a lot of people with serious physical challenges, what they need to hear is, is tough. It's hard. You know, during physical therapy, some of the, the best therapists are some of the people who you are not going to like a lot because they're not going to put up with your garbage. And your garbage is, is a lack of will to fight. And, you know, people know about my condition. I had overcome paralysis. And, you know, the biggest challenge for a lot of people is self-imposed. I, I don't want this video to sound like I'm picking on Whitney. I want to see Whitney do well. I want to see him thrive. I want to see him figure things out. Just like I want to see all of you guys benefit from overcoming the challenge. But as long as we surround ourselves with people who only tell us what we want to hear, we'll never get, we'll never find our way. You know, I'm not going to sit here and say that with this condition you get better because in, in reality you don't. You continue to progress. But you got to find a way to live. You got to find a way to, to enjoy. You know, this, this summer I'll be doing something that I absolutely enjoy doing, but it's absolutely absurd when people hear it. And people that know me and they hear what I do on the, during the summers, they're like, you got to be kidding me. <laughs> But I do it so I have something to look forward to. And it's extremely dangerous. It's and, and it's physically, physically challenging beyond. I go into the wilderness and I go alone. And See, before I became sick, that's what I used to like to do is I'd go, I was a mountain climber and I would I hiked the Yukon and I did a lot of those things. And so every summer I make it a point to somehow, some way go into the wilderness and it's it's wilderness. It's not your normal. Um, it's out there. But it gives me a sense of purpose. It gives me a sense of something. It's Like I said, it's extremely difficult because I don't go with people. And it's extremely dangerous because I'm in an area that has a lot of grizzly bears, <laughs> mountain lions, and a few other things. And if I fall, I fall. It's, it's a problem. But it's what I work for every year. So I have a purpose to to do, to do the absurd and it clears your mind it it shows that you still have some control over your situation 
even though it's physically incredibly difficult. One of my goals is to is to um, canoe the Yukon River and to canoe the Mississippi from the headwaters down. I don't know if I'll ever be able to achieve that. But without goals, tomorrow doesn't matter. Without purpose, tomorrow doesn't matter. And with that, I'll call this one. Use that internal fire to find a way to overcome whatever challenge life throws at you. It's not easy. The cards we're handed are not good cards. But if we play the cards we're handed well, we can stick around. We can stay in the game a lot longer than people might give us, might expect us to.